Rocks go. Go. LD. LD is go. MD. MD is go. LD, verify go to initiate terminal count. LC, you are go to initiate terminal count. Copy. Houston, you are go for TLI. Over. Hey, so I wanted to make a new series because I've been asked a few times to make some videos on my current Kerbal Space Program career mode. So being a rocket scientist, I kind of look at the game a little differently. I always try to think of like, is this really possible? Can you make this? And I kind of design things based on my understanding of how spacecraft are built and the real world mission architectures and real ideas that go into doing some of these things that you can do in Kerbal Space Program. Um, with that, I've kind of enforced my own rules on myself. Um, a lot of those rules are, are self-imposed. Um, you can play the game however you want, but in my current playthrough, I'm trying to play it kind of similar to how the Artemis program has laid out the future of colonizing space, for instance. Um, a lot of that evolves around the architecture with Gateway and the, uh, the lunar missions that are going to be set up where there's a proving ground where you go and you send technology before you send it out into the void. With that, I'm also trying to impose on myself a set of rules where I don't just jump technologically. Um, even if I unlock a better engine or a... Um, significantly more advanced propulsion system, I'm not going to just jump on that. I try and make it so that there's a clear progression from solids to chemical to advanced chemical and cryogenic engines and then onward to nuclear and then we have all the way into more advanced concepts like Vasimir and heavy ion engines. Um, with that, I, uh, I also am playing on the standard Kerbal Solar System, which it's smaller, so I get to have a little more fun with things. It's not as stressful planning a mission and then falling short, and we can get a little more fun with the mission architectures and concepts, and things can go a little bit faster. So with that said, I wasn't actually recording most of my early missions, so there's kind of a lag time where it's mostly screenshots at first, and then it gets into more videos and stuff. So some of the later episodes of this playthrough will be much more interesting. Um, as a part of that, um, it is career mode, so everything has to be profitable. Um, every mission, for the most part, is based on contracts, so I receive the contracts from the space agency, and then I try and mix and match them with the same mission so that I can score either multiple contracts with one mission, or I can use the contracts to forward a greater objective, like landing more hardware on the ground, but calling it a space station initially before sending it to the surface. For anyone who's played Kerbal Space Program Career, they'll know that a lot of the early game is really basic up and down. So I decided to start things a little further along after I made Orbit for the first time. Um, I used a decently modest spacecraft with just kind of a large upper stage. It went up, it came back. Um, after some enhancement, I was able to send it back up, landed on the moon Minmus, and returned that as well. But I had not discovered any of the technologies to get out of the spacecraft. After that, the uh, space agency starts giving you more advanced contracts, so it sent me one for a space station over Minmus, and I immediately seized on that, using it as a gateway type concept. So much like with the Artemis program, the gateway would serve as kind of a staging point. Um, this station would be a hub basically for all my operations there, and it would be the first real foothold outside of that LKO area. Um, from there, I had to add on to it. Um, it required some extra components, and I decided it would be a great point to try out rotating rings. Um, this rotating ring station needs to be deployed, so it was sent there unmanned and assembled on site. But to finish the job and get it all set up, I had to send a crew out with an engineer to inflate the ring. The 
crew took off using a modified Gemini rocket. So this is a Titan missile with some extended upper stage and strap-on side boosters. Early in the career, there are a lot of limitations on part count and mass limits. So the whole rocket for a good portion of the game can't exceed the weight of 140 tons. And with the difficulty settings I had on, it would be a very long time before I could upgrade the launch pad enough to withstand more than that 140 ton limit. You'll see a lot of launches in the early episodes of this series where the overall payload size is very modest, and that's just because during that time period I could not physically fly anything heavier. So this rocket is the absolute weight limit for what I can send, but it's very, very capable. With the initial funds of this station and some of the early on science, I was able to kind of move towards a standardized launch system. So I chose Atlas basically as my workhorse launcher and a contract followed up to put a surface base, which was exactly what I was looking for. So Atlas took up several components. These elements all met in Minmus orbit and they were staged uh, and assembled for descent. The contract stated it had to have habitation for like six and an additional laboratory and 4,000 units of liquid fuel, which I did not understand how much that was until I actually got there. During this, I realized I'm gonna need a large communication network set up over the moon. Um, this network got sent over on Atlas as well and deployed to ensure I never lose connectivity while I'm trying to dock things or rendezvous or land. With better connectivity, I docked two more surface base fuel tanks to the base, and they would also contain the landing engines to bring everything to the surface. The problem with this is these tanks had to arrive empty due to the mass limits of the Atlas, so a modified Atlas upper stage was sent to go bring more fuel and reload the base. It took several of these to actually fill up the tanks, uh, to reach that 4,000 unit limit, and I had to have even more than that so that I did not void the contract when I landed. I had a lander go down and scout the area. Uh, they planted a flag. I targeted the flag and I was able to land the surface base without much issue. Uh, the engines on it were pretty powerful and the gravity on Minmus is really light, which is why I selected it for most of my surface operations. With the base on the surface, I was able to send down the lander to go inhabit it. Um, this would be a crew of one initially, but in the future I would be able to send more Kerbals as the base was expanded. The initial capacity of the base would be eight, but during this time I only had one astronaut basically available to send down to the surface. Um, from this point on I started getting better and better at spot landing and targeting a waypoint on the ground and actually putting the spacecraft right down next to it. So as things go, um, we're going to see a lot more of this because this base is just the beginning. Spot landing would be a really important skill as things develop because I would need to add more and more components. At that point as well, I was able to run a sortie using the lander and retrieve surface samples and send them home back for analysis. This would be a really big chunk of science and would help things expand even more. Upon returning, I got another contract to go and land on the surface of the moon and plant a flag. A lot of players use this as their first real, like, extraplanetary landing, but it's actually a lot harder than landing on Minmus, so I had actually held off on it for a little while. Um, I sent a two-part station, orbiter, and lander to try and take out two contracts in one go. With both pieces of hardware in orbit, I was able to take those contracts, get some surface samples, and return everybody home. The lander would remain in orbit in case I ever wanted to send anyone back and land on the surface, uh, and that would stay in that whole concept of reusable architecture in orbit. In my playthrough, I have not really used much in the way of reusable launch systems. Um, they're not really as profitable as just reusing the in-space architecture. The spacecraft portion of the mission is usually the most expensive part, and because of that, that's the part I'm actually reusing. Um, I try and build a lot of capability into the orbiting parts and use a cheap and easy to produce rocket for each flight. Um, that means I don't need to keep redesigning a rocket every time, and I try and maintain the space constraints of that given rocket. 
Um, everything has to fold up and fit in the fairings. So even with that, it became time to reach out a little farther into the solar system. From this point, I accepted a contract to go visit Duna, which is a Mars analog in Kerbal Space Program. And Atlas began flying components up to dock together in low Kerbin orbit. Um, the initial spacecraft was launched up there with no fuel, and I sent propellant tankers to come in and dock with it to fill it up over time. The tankers would be a little difficult to handle just because of how heavy they were, so it took a lot of launches to be able to get up, send the tank, fill the vehicle, and then deorbit the tanker into the atmosphere. In the middle of this, I had to continue financing my program, so an expansion to the surface base came in, and that got landed and scooted into place to connect up. This would expand the habitability on the surface base to up to six, and really make things a little more of a colony versus an outpost. And as things progress, I will be landing more things, and we'll see more on the assembly of that interplanetary transport ship um, in the next video. So this is just kind of a initial overview of where things have been. Um, I promise as we go, there'll be more video footage. I just hadn't planned on making any videos on this subject and recording uh, a lot of my gameplay during that time period. So as we go, my recording skills and the camera positioning you're going to notice are getting a lot better, and there's going to be a lot more footage behind all of these missions. So yeah, uh, let me know what you think. I, uh, I didn't really know what else to say here, but uh, if you want to see more, just let me know in the comments, and I'm probably going to make more anyway. So uh, keep an eye out for this, and I'll be posting more real-world rocket stuff as well. Thanks! Bye!